So it all will come down, I think, to uh, March. So cruise action battle in support of land combat. Yes, that's what we need to win. Our forces in the area seem to substantially outweigh theirs. They are reporting only a battle cruiser, a battleship, load of heavy cruisers, whereas we have four battleships, um, our heavy cruisers, and seven carriers. Mind you, they've got 10 carriers and five light carriers. Ooh. Uh, this might be a big one. I, uh, I might have to do this in parts. So, uh, yes, I'm certainly going to accept that. Um, Given they've really only got air bases on Borneo and Formosa, uh, I know the Formosa is close, but I'm going to concentrate on attacking the enemy ships because they've got a lot of flat tops. And some ships from Britain have joined. Well, let's hope it's a fair few. And here we are, and there are the discs back. Hooray! Okay, so we've got the radar range here in this green, which is always hard to see. We have the torpedo range, which is now actually longer than the uh, main armament, the six inch gun range. And of course here, the all important sighting range. Just a note, I've had to reset the request for land-based cap over this division. It's a thing of if you leave the game, save the game, then come back later that you have to do. So let's see. I would imagine we're going to find something pretty soon. So Constance says it's found something. It's not the Ville de Arras, I assume. Unless it is. Only one I can see. So we can relax about that. Can't see what Constance can see. Obviously, because Constance is British, she may not realize that it's one of ours. Ah, now there's two. Okay, another Corvette. Um, okay, I can't change the direction. So let's just carry on. The British destroyers seem to be interested, but they're coming back again. And another. Where's this one? Ah, ah, now you're talking. We're in a bit of a tricky situation. This battle involves the weakest element of my fleet, my light cruisers. So that's not helpful. It's essential that I win or at least get a draw so that uh, because a Japanese victory would put more pressure on my defenders because they've invaded here. Um, it's three and a half hours before daylight and so everything has to be done by radar. We are in a position where I want to keep reasonable connection with being able to retreat to base to save damaged ships. And because certainly if I tootled over into this kind of direction, uh, I would find myself in the position of the Japanese cutting me off from my base, which of course would be a bad idea. So I'm minded to proceed in this direction and then to turn around and possibly kind of do a, uh, a circuit in order to defend my base, stop any nasty surprises, and be a bit cat and mouse and ward off the Japanese. I don't think this is all the Japanese, so there may be more Japanese coming up from behind. Equally, their base is actually off to the east in Formosa, so they could be coming from that direction as well. Um, I'm certain they're not coming from the west because this is all land or indeed from the north because that's all land as well. So those are kind of the main options. So if I keep in this kind of loop and avoid being uh, getting the Japanese onto the wrong side, 
Uh, I think I should remain safe. And if I run out the clock and play a bit cat and mouse until daytime, I think I will be able to contain any losses from my side. And more importantly, allow one of my main strengths to come into play because the Japanese are a long way from their air bases. And given it's a cruiser action, I doubt that there's going to be a carrier lurking from their part. Whereas I have bases from the British here, myself there and there, and a couple more of the British there. So when day comes along, I suspect I will be able to attack them from land-based air, which may well be very helpful. So that's the plan. It might be a little bit of a frustrating battle, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I've gone in and I've adjusted all of the squadrons to not fire torpedoes. Now, they can fire torpedoes on radar, but first of all, the range is really long. The, uh, the green line, the faint green line, is the, the radar. The blue is the torpedo. The red is the main armament, and the gray is the sighting range. So you don't really know what you're firing up against. Certainly at the moment, they're all ident unidentified, and I doubt they will be identified unless they got so close, um, which I'm not planning to do, or until daylight. So the likelihood is they would be loosing off their torpedoes against a bunch of destroyers at long range. I don't know. That doesn't sound like a recipe for success. So I've stopped the torpedo firing, and I've sent them down to the southwest in order to retain contact with our base. So let's see how that goes. Just do it a minute at a time. So we've already started to fire. I bet that's the, yeah, that's the Corbin. I'm noticing the constants, although it's marginally closer, hasn't. So it's entirely possible that Corbin and Victor Hugo actually have better, more modern fire control radar than the Royal Navy does at this point. So there's something to bear in mind. I'm going to straighten out the constants and begin to straighten out the cruisers, allow my destroyers to pass on the uh, disengage side. Now, from the way that they are doing this, it sort of implies that these ships might be larger. I'm expecting one or more of these to be a light cruiser certainly the way that they sort of make the uh, the ship name sort of implies it. And it's important not to get too close. So Constance has opened up. The range is 13,000. So I'm kind of happy with 13,000. Let's keep it at a kind of 13,000 level. Let's just bring these guys down. And get the warp in. So, yep, some of the destroyers have opened up. And we've hit something. Now, how do they know we've hit on a radar? I can't tell. Perhaps it's a visual observation of an explosion. But I'm kind of thinking we can't put too much store in that kind of stuff. So they've separated out a little bit. And it kind of looks like these might be light cruisers. And these might be destroyers. So... So because I don't want these guys to pass over the top of me, I think I'm going to want to change these. Now, I could turn these this way, but I think that opens me up to um, torpedo danger. So I'm going to turn this way instead, which is going to be annoying because I'm going to be turning into my destroyers. I might keep the destroyers going down a little bit and then get the destroyers to turn and follow behind um, my light cruisers for the British. And then for the um, French, I might get them to turn right now so that they're in the van. I'm, by the way, I'm not going to play fast and loose with these. These are Epe class Sam destroyers. I don't want them just to get sunk in some melee uh, in the middle of the night. 
so I'm going to be mindful of that. So let's just turn constants and turn here to, whoops, they're going very slowly. I thought they'd set their speed up a bit more generously. And keep these guys going south a little bit. Uh, so let's start to turn that. And a bit more. And start to turn these chaps as well. Constants to um, speed up a bit so that it can overtake. So that's got everybody going north. That's good. Let's get the four bin to straighten up. So I'm going to just bring these down a little bit to the light cruiser speed so they don't go too far past. And slow down the constants. So there's no information on these ships at all. They seem to be moving quite slowly. Oops. This uh, British destroyers put itself in the way. Let's take down their speed as well. So that's all going sort of to plan. No, it's not particularly heroic, but um, this doesn't feel like a heroic opportunity. This feels like an area of caution. So now we're at risk of disengaging. Do I turn back or not? So I feel it's safer to know where they are than to disengage and then wonder where on earth they're going to turn up. So once again, I'm going to <laughs> turn them all around and send them to the south and keep in contact, but relatively distant contact. Now this does run, run the risk of running out of ammo. So given the number of hits that we've had so far, I, uh, I might tell them, I mean, we're straddling. So, you know, it is it is good targets and we haven't hit anything. I'm sorry, we haven't been hit. Uh, let's just have a little look at the ammo situation. So as I feared, we've fired something like 300 rounds. Um, so, and we've only had half an hour of battle. There's still three hours of night time to go. So I may well check my fire and um, yeah, stop them from um, whittling through all of their ammunition too quickly. In which case I, um, because yes, the time, yeah, two hours and 55 minutes, a long time to go. So actually, I may just allow them to disengage and um, yeah, just, just cool it for now. They're going to come back. If I keep my coherence with a destroyer division in the van and in the rear and the light cruisers in the center, 
uh, they, I imagine, are still wanting to come in this direction. They're not just going to go away. Um, not that I would mind if they did, but I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. Then, uh, yeah, we need to play out the time. See, look, they're already starting to turn. Ish. And there they go, disappearing. So I'm just going to turn them around. And get them to run south. So I'm going to cool the speed down as well. Let's take it down to 25 or something. So they're not running so hot all the time. It's a good speed, but it's not an exhausting speed. I know it's oil fired and all of that, but still it should be more comfortable. Let's take these down as well. Seems to be one of my most maneuvery kind of engagements ever. So as you can see, they're still milling about. Just straighten up the destroyers a little bit. I get too close. They're out at sixteen thousand yards from the forbin. speed up the destroyers in the van so that they uh, get out of the way of the light cruisers. So once again they are in main armament range, red. Well within range there now. They seem to be making a bit of a play. So let's just give it one more minute, see if they turn. Nope. So now seems like a good time to open fire again. If they think they're coming in for some sort of torpedo run. Ah, that showed them a bit of respect. And is it me, or do there seem to be a lot more of them now? I definitely think there's a lot more of them. Let's let these guys open fire as well. Oh, one hit. And another hit. Well done, Constance. And there was me berating its um its firing abilities. And now they're in danger of I was gonna say they're in danger of passing over the top of us. Oops. Yeah, let's see if they will run to the south with us. Or they will just disengage. Okay. They seem to be in danger of getting above us. So, guess what, chaps? Time to turn.
you know, the submarine here must be going, what on earth's going on? Or indeed, they must be wondering, if only you could bring the enemy over to me, I might have a good chance. Keep it at 25. Let's keep these at 25. Oh, they are at 25. Yeah, 25 and 25. And put these down. These are all ours. Various uh, corvettes out at night. Not doing very much. Might just hold the fire again at this moment. Yeah, they're too far away do very much i mean we got a couple of hits on them but it didn't seem to slow any of them down now they very much seem to be operating as two separate forces which is you know nice these guys keep on going too fast Let these chaps open fire. And let them join in. Now they all seem very close. Yeah, 9,000 yards. Nothing too horrible, but it is a bit depth chargeable. And now we are at 8,700 yards. Yep, they're getting closer and closer. So I'm going to turn these together. And turn this and this away as well let's allow the constants to fire again A bit close to the land, but that's just how it goes. So that's opened up the range to 12,000, so I'm happier with that. I know it's not like me to fight for a draw or fight cautiously, but occasionally that's what you've got to do. 500 rounds fired. Yeah, I'm getting really concerned. <laughs> so that will be no to opening fire. Uh, you're on no. You are on no. You probably need to be on a no as well. Because if we just have a little look at the time. Oh, okay. I thought it was much more than that. So an hour left before dawn. So, yeah, I'm very pleased at that. Let's do another turn. They don't have to turn together. So let's do that. This, this, this. Okay. 
I thought we told you not to fire. However good the radar is, I can't imagine at the moment that it can ever be as good as actual daylight firing. Let's just take it out. And I'm just going to move a little bit further to the west just to give ourselves a little bit more sea room. See if it pushes these chaps out the way. I can only see this force. There is another one lurking around, but it's wasting its time. So can't complain at that. Cherry wave to the uh, Galatee. And we've got recons taking off from uh, from here, from Fort Bayard, and no doubt from other stations as well. So we're going to turn again. We should call this the tourney battle. See if we can recapture our formation. Why the constants is uh, going quite so slow 20 knots 23 24. Come on, constants, pick up the pace. And there go the recons. Oh, and here we come for a bit of daylight or twilight. Yep. So I can take the radar off now. See, we can bring the speed down to 20, I think. Now that we've got far better sight of what the heck is going on. Let's do the classic. Okay, well, it's not a huge sighting range yet. And off we go. And more recons taking off. What is the time? Five minutes to sunrise. It sounds like the title of a slightly old fashioned progressive rock song, but never mind. So there we go. Well, all well and good. So certainly looking at the moment that we're heading for some sort of draw, which I'm fine with. I mean, not thrilled, but fine. Oops, let's go for the old turn.
study in uh, ship coordination. So let's bring it down to cruise. And let it go on for a few more minutes than one minute at a time, particularly if we can get everybody going on the same course. Actually, I'm going to take these off manual and put them onto AI. Uh, and then just control the fleet from the forbin and see how that all goes. We might just put these onto screen. Now that does mean the whole um, don't fire your torpedoes and don't uh, shoot thing may uh, may have ended. Ah. Yeah. So that's interesting. They seem to have got themselves trapped there. So I don't mind that because we can um, we can definitely have a bit of a shoot, knowing that it's going to be difficult for them to uh, launch their torpedoes. So let's take that out of screen. Go to line ahead and go say hello to these. Trapped people. So two light cruisers and one, two, three, four, five destroyers. So yes. Having a nice leisurely shoot might work well, particularly because we can stay straight. And did they just launch some torpedoes? You launched torpedoes. <laughs> uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, what can you do with these guys? I have to get them all on. Uh, manual control because they're just being stupid. Right, well, let's get the epi out of the way then. these destroyers out of the way. Mind you, now would be a good time to launch some torpedoes. Are you really damaged? You're taking a medium hit as well. Hmm. Okay, well that you do your torpedoes too. Bring the constants back into line. Oh dear. Uh, you also, my little darling, seem to have taken a bit of a hit. Oh, you've already gone independent.
Just zoom out to make sure that there's uh, nobody else creeping up. Now, it would be nice if some aeroplanes turned up. Yeah, they're starting to run out of ammo. Let's bring these guys around. I don't know where these torpedoes are going. So let's bring these destroyers out as well. Let's head the damage destroyers back to base. One of theirs seems to have stopped, so that's nice. Not sure why they're turning together. Now, I could, of course, send the, um, the British destroyers in, suicide style, and see what they can achieve. Actually, and I might just send my destroyers back. Let's hope nobody runs into anybody. Whoops, Constance, come back. Oh. Oops. Well, that's a fair point. Have these fired? No, they've still got torpedoes. Let's send the British in. Is that too risky? See, their uh, ships are suffering a bit. Oh, come on. Well, I suppose I should count myself lucky that it's the uh, destroyers that have taken the torpedoes. Because as we all know, destroyers are very vulnerable to torpedoes rather than my light cruisers. So, in go the ridiculously brave British. Just focus on what's going on here. So, are you? Right. You need to come out. You can carry on going in. You probably need to back them up. I doubt there's much going to happen with you. They are escaping. Let's, um, Let's send them all back in that direction. Bring you down to five as well. Send you back. And bring the cruisers in. Let's see what's happening with this lot. So you definitely want to come out. You definitely want to come out. Uh, actually, I think we'll send them all out. That's what we wanted. Well done, Brits. Outstanding performance. Don't think the Saracen is long for this world, but uh, no 
don't know why the constants was going so slow. So it's not the end of the world for the Japanese force, but if uh, they take more damage than we do, then I will be happy with that. And I think with that, I will get everybody to go home. Surprised that these guys haven't had any air attacks. Oh, that's why. That would have been so useful, honestly. To have the Japanese so close to my air bases, they would have taken a right old pounding and instead they've had a get out of jail free card. That's that's really not fair. Uh, that's pretty much it for everyone. Oops. Oh, poor old Saracen lost its rudder. Now it's raining. Boom. Oh, for sakes. One of ours and one of our minds, honestly. That was, that was nasty. So we won. And that's that's the biggest thing. I'm I'm distressed by the losses of um, destroyers. You know, valuable valuable destroyers. Let's just zoom in. Um, so they lost that light cruiser. One of our epes, the second of our epes, sunk. One of the British sunk. Only one of the British sunk, considering I sent them in on a bit of a death mission. And, um, yeah, well, the heavy damage doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah, tricky, tricky battle. I, I'm, I'm liking the results. Well, I won, so I can't grumble. Such a shame, such a shame that the weather turned nasty and stopped our air power coming out because that would have caused a heck of a lot more damage to the Japanese, and we would have been relatively safe from air attack. So yeah, phew. They were, they were pretty lucky, pretty lucky to get away with that. Uh, interesting, the air power, so we combined have 765 planes uh, they had 219, so we do have local air superiority, so that is great. Uh, and as for the forces, well, obviously there was that one there. Was there another one? Let's just have a look at the tracks. So, some, oh, <laughs> there was another one, and they've just gone off somewhere else. Uh, so yeah, they started around about there. So yeah, there was one here and one there and we got involved. But yeah, okay. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah, pretty happy. Let's end that one. And here we are. Oh, even a victory point. Marginal, but we will have it. So hopefully 
that would have shored up some of the land-based defenses of our colony. Cross fingers. Our Charlotois, built in Britain, has given us valuable insights into light forces. Well, that's, that's very nice. And he is in commission. God bless you, sir. John Dark has condensed the trouble. Um, uh, 345 and 900 nautical miles. Not bothered by that. Nice technology. Fighting valiantly. That's what I want to hear. A couple more battles where we can uh, beat them. That would be great. Another of our submarines gone. And they lost one too. Oh, yeah. Chewing through. Ooh. Battle between the British and Japanese navies. The Japanese CV. Shokoku. And a British destroyer had been sunk. Well, all in favour of that. Well done, Britain. So, Japanese have been busy on the old invention. Um, invented improved rolled shipbuilding steel, ASW torpedoes, and IWF, which we have as well. Uh, and we're resisting their troops. And we have more ships in South East than our bases can support. So I'm going to have to sort that one out, but I will sort that one out in the next episode. Not to mention that uh, I'm going to be off most next week playing this lovely game, Balance of Powers by Compass Games. It's a grand strategic First World War game published about 2017 or so, something like that. Um, I've played it... Uh, once before had a really lovely weekend and uh yeah looking forward to refamiliarizing myself with the rules i'll probably do a little video of it and i've noticed that there haven't been many grand strategic board games published for a while and i'm i just had a hankering to play one so that's what i'll be doing to amuse myself i'll obviously be um returning to this exciting war with japan as soon as possible <laughs>